Is your heart formed for mercy and charity? A blessed day, everyone. This is our reflection question for today. Holy Spirit, make my heart open to the Word of God. Make my heart open to goodness. Make my heart open to the beauty of God. Erwin, a junior naval officer, was discharged from military service after he was diagnosed with cancer, a standard military procedure at that time. The loss of his job was quite a blow, but he was determined to get back both his health and his job. With faith and determination, he battled the disease that tried to take over his body. At one point, he was given only two weeks to live, but eventually, his cancer was brought under control. Irwin then focused his attention on his desire to become a naval officer. He discovered, however, that regulations forbade reinstatement of a person discharged because of cancer. He was determined, however, so he went through government bureaucracy, going through tons of red tape in order for his voice to be heard. Everyone told Irwin, give up, it would take an act of Congress to get reinstated. This advice gave him an idea. He would pursue an act of Congress. His efforts paid off. President Harry S. Truman eventually signed into law a special bill that allowed Erwin W. Rosenberg to re-enlist and become a rear admiral in the United States 7th Fleet. In today's Gospel reading, the seeming presence of bureaucracy exhibited by the Pharisees was a deterrent to Jesus' mission to his genuine offer of love and salvation. This common organizational structure is very much in operation today, consisting of rules, policies, procedures, and hierarchies of authority. The Pharisees functioned in a bureaucratic manner, their strict interpretation of the Torah often placing them in direct opposition to Jesus. However, in the reading, we see Jesus exhibiting the characteristics of charismatic leadership in his dealing with bureaucracy. The charismatic leadership style remains a viable option when dealing with bureaucracy even today. Thus, Jesus highlights a compassionate response to hunger. As a human need takes precedence over strict observance of a ritual or a law. While the temple and all institutional trappings may have their relative importance, there are higher concerns. Jesus states that God's concerns are higher value and priority. Further, with the Gospel's focus on mercy and sacrifice, when we look at the cross, we see sacrificial love that expresses itself in the form of mercy. Jesus teaches us that sacrifice is not lived for sacrifice's sake, but is oftentimes a consequence of love. In this case, it is love expressed in mercy. The Pharisees demanded sacrifice without extending mercy. They lost sense of the essence of their vocations as guardians of God's law. Created to help us live according to God's heart, 
with the highest command at the forefront of all. Love the Lord your God and love your neighbor as yourself. As Christians, we are called to be transformed by Christ, which implies loving as He loves, ready to sacrifice for the sake of mercy and charity. Let us pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Heavenly Father, we desire a heart of mercy like yours as you continue to show us mercy. Transform our hearts so that we may seek to share with others what they truly need from you, mercy and love. Jesus, we trust in you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless your families, brothers and sisters. God bless our Catholic faith and couples for Christ.